So you're getting into DIY speaker building and you see a diagram like this and you say to yourself, what the heck does this mean? I get it, I've been there, we've all been there. Today, I'm gonna to show you this. This is actually the crossover for the Rule Breaker, which I think is a great project to go ahead and start with and solves a lot of issues for those that have a center channel speaker that are having trouble hearing it. And if you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. I think you'd really enjoy it. But today, we're gonna to focus on just taking this diagram and turning it into a crossover so that you could build either the Rule Breaker or build really any other DIY audio project, you're gonna be much better off knowing this. So let's get started. Now this can be very confusing, so let's break it down to its basic components. Uh, right here, we have what looks like a power amp. That's what they call it. It's not really a power amp. Well, it is, it's the input signal. But really in this particular case, I'd really like you to think of it instead of a power amp, I'd like you to think of this as the binding post. And um, you'll see why in a little bit. We also have uh, right here, S1. This is the BMR driver. So this is going to be uh, what we would consider the tweeter in this particular build. And then S2 down here are the TCPs. You'll see two of these. These are what we would call the woofers. Now those are the three main components uh, that we have to worry about. Now we're seeing some pathways and these pathways go to these components and they have components in the, the middle of them. And any of these that say C on them, those are capacitors, and that's what a capacitor signal looks like. Uh, the L's are inductors, and the R is a resistor. So we have a capacitor up here that's gonna be connected to the BMR. We have a capacitor here that's gonna be going to the TCP network. We have an inductor up here that's gonna to go to the BMR, and an inductor up here that's gonna to go to the TCPs, and one resistor. Now, I know some of this might be a little bit confusing, don't worry, it's gonna make a lot more sense as we continue. Let's go ahead and uh, mark this up a little so that you can kind of understand what these pathways mean and what they're doing. Once again, we're gonna consider this the back of the binding post. So at the back of the binding post, uh, we see all these little dots all over these diagrams. These dots are connection points. So what we'll see here is a connection point here connection point here. And then there's all these little connection points. We're gonna ignore those for right now. I wanna just focus on these two connection points here. These two connection points are pretty unique. And the reason why they're unique is because what we notice is that there's uh, on the BMR, for example, there's a capacitor here, a resistor here, and an inductor here. What this is showing you is that one side of the capacitor will connect to one side of the resistor and one side of the inductor. All three of those will connect in one spot. Now that's really key, and that's gonna make this build a lot easier once we get to that part. Now we can use that same assessment by understanding that one side of the inductor is gonna connect here to the capacitor, and then the other side of the capacitor is gonna connect to something else. Now this is also gonna connect to your woofers. I'll explain that in just a minute. So we have a connection point right here between one side of the capacitor and then your woofers. So this connection point right here would be the resistor going to the positive of the BMR. And this connection point would be the beginning of the capacitor going to your binding post. And this connection point would be the exact same thing. It would be uh, the beginning of the binding post going into that inductor. So if we were to draw that out as like the electrical pathway, like where the signal would go, the signal would go from the back of the binding post and it would connect to one side of this capacitor. And then these three would connect together. And then we'd have one side of the resistor going out to the positive of the BMR. We'll see that in a little bit as well. I'll break that down a little bit further. And then the other one is we would have this. What I want you to think about is actually two positives coming out here. And then we'd have a positive wire coming out and it's gonna connect that inductor. And the reason why I say that, and then of course this is gonna to go to one TCP and then it's gonna hop from one TCP to the other. There's a couple different ways we can hook that up. I'll show you that in a minute. The reason why I want you to think of this as two is because I want you to actually build two different crossover boards in this. Uh, these are actually two different networks. We're gonna build two different crossover boards because I think it fits in the rule breaker a little bit better and it's gonna make it a lot easier for you if you're having issues uh, understanding this concept. I think it'll just be uh, easy to understand. Now you'll also notice on this diagram that you're gonna see all these triangles. What are these triangles? They're 
interesting. They seem like they go to nowhere. So what this program does is it puts these triangles out there to show all the grounds being connected. So this is a virtual. There's literally would be a wire coming from here to here and here to here, and we'll see that in a minute. And same with this, wires going there and there and there. But they do that to uh, just make it so that you don't have these wire traces everywhere and, and it would be really confusing to be able to look at. Uh, even more confusing than it is now. So this is going to be your negative. So this is going to be the negative from the back of the power amp, and then it's going to connect these. And I'll show you that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the binding post. What we're going to do is we're going to split these wires. We'll have two positives and two grounds. And that's because we're going to have the positives and negatives going to each of the separate crossover boards or crossover networks. We're going to be making a high pass and a low pass, one that will feed just the BMR drivers and one that will feed the TCPs. Now in the rule breaker, this is good because they can easily fit behind each one of the TCP woofers. But in general, if you're just getting started, this is going to make your crossover building significantly easier. So always split the boards when you can. So I would recommend always splitting your networks and we're going to show you that right now. So I always recommend splitting your networks. Let's focus on the BMR first. I noticed on the back of the binding posts, my wires were red and blue. Uh, it doesn't matter what color your wires are, but blue in this instance is actually the black. So when we're talking about the ground, okay? Doesn't really matter. You can have it whatever color. You can have it yellow, white, pink, purple. You can do them all red, although it would be very confusing later for you to go back in there and, and trace it. So I would do at least two separate colors if you can. Because if you make a mistake, you want to know uh, easily how to identify it. So, all right. We have our power amplifier coming here. And what we're going to do is we're going to run one of those reds from the back of the binding post that we just showed you. Okay. And we're going to run it straight to this particular capacitor. And then we are going to wire the capacitor, the inductor, and the resistor all together in one pot. And it's going to become one big ball of stuff. We're going to use some, uh, I use hot glue. You can use whatever you want to, to connect it. But I like to use hot glue to glue it together. Um, it makes it really easy to, to glue together. And then you can also glue the uh, whole shenanigans the, the whole crossover, if you may, you know, into the side of the cabinet. You don't have to worry about screwing it down. It makes it pretty easy. All right. And then we're going to take a, a red wire out of the other side of that resistor. We're going to bring it right into the BMR. Okay. So there's only going to be two wires connected to this for the positive. There's going to be one coming from the back of the um, binding post into this capacitor. And then there's going to be one red wire coming out of the resistor to the positive of the BMR. That's it. Those two wires, that is it. Okay. Now, for the ground, we're going to take one of those. I know it was blue on mine. It will be black on yours or whatever color you choose. But you'll take one of the grounds. You'll connect it to the binding post. And then you'll connect it right to the other side of that inductor. That's it. One wire is going to connect there. And they're going to take one other wire. And you're going to connect it from there to the other side of the BMR, the, the negative terminal on the BMR going to be that easy okay and then our bmr crossover is going to be connected now if you wanted to test this out you could test it out by itself and you'd be ready to go but let me show you what that looks like as the actual crossover because you you want to be able to visualize this and like i said this is about 10 minutes into the video and there it is this is the crossover itself i'll explain where the connection points are so that you can understand what we just did. Remember that connecting point where I said the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor are all going to connect together? That's what we did here. We connect them all together. All I did is take the ends of each one of them, and I just turned them together, twisted them together, and then, of course, I soldered that as well. Now, you're going to notice uh, two more points. One is the other side of the capacitor. So this side of the capacitor, you're going to want to run right here to the back of the binding post that easy now this part of the resistor we're going to run this right to the bmr now you will notice that these are pretty close together uh once i glue these and i glue these all together just make sure that you um keep the wires away from each other you don't want this positive to like accidentally touch this positive or these two 
um, ends to touch each other, okay? Because if you do, you'll bypass everything. So you don't want to do that. Now you're going to ask, like, where's the ground go? Okay, unfortunately, I don't have a great picture of the other wire that's on the inductor. But the inductor has two wires on it, and it does not matter which wire you wire where, okay? I, I get that question a little bit that says, hey, does it matter if it's the inside or the outside wire? It doesn't. You can use the inside or the outside. It doesn't really matter, okay? I'm going to just uh, connect it here at the bottom and just pretend like this is where the inside wire is. Uh, I can't see it, unfortunately, in this particular picture. But you'll take that other inside wire, the other side of the inductor wire, and you're going to connect that to uh, the terminal cup. Okay, so one side is going to go to the terminal cup, and then you're going to take another wire, and you're going to connect that to the negative of the BMR. It's that simple. So that's your whole crossover for the BMR. And you're going to run that BMR into one behind one of the TCPs. It doesn't matter if it's the left or the right. Either one. It doesn't make any difference at all. Um, the big thing is to, to note that I did not talk about is if you notice about this inductor, is the inductor is orange and then the tips are silver. Okay. So that orange coating, you want to make sure not to solder to the orange coating. You want to solder to the silver parts, not, not the orange coating. Because if you solder to the orange coating, um, it's not going to work. Okay. So let's save that as two. Now we got the good idea of what's going on there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the low pass now. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Once again, this is the binding post. So we have a wire coming out of the binding post and then it's going straight to one of the, the inductor. Okay. Now we have the inductor and capacitor connecting at this point. And then we have a wire coming out of that connecting to one of the TCPs and then a wire connecting to the other TCP. And for the ground, very simple. We're just going to run the ground straight down. And it's going to connect to one, the other side of the capacitor, I should say. And then the other side of the capacitor is going to connect to one of the TCPs and then that's going to connect to the other TCP. So here's the crossover. And honestly, this is, this is the entire crossover for this. It's, it really is a simplistic crossover, and I understand that this can be a little bit confusing. So once again, we're going to show you where this goes. We have this red one right here. We have one side of the inductor. Once again, doesn't matter which wire you use in the inductor. Once again, notice some of the inductor is red, some of it is silver. When you're soldering it, solder it to the silver part. All right. This right here is your input. So that's going directly to your terminal plate okay so your terminal cup so that's going to go to your terminal cup and it's going to be connected you can solder that or spade it like i spaded it whatever you want to do this is going to be your solder point that we showed you on the diagram between the inductor and the capacitor and then this wire right here is going to run to one of the pauses of the tcp however there is there is another option. I'm going to show you both ways to do that here in just a second, but let's just show you where all the wires go first. The capacitor, once again, we're going to take the ground that's going to go over to your binding post. And then this ground is going to go to the other side of the TCP. Now you have two different ways to hook up the TCPs. The TCPs are wired in parallel. So what I did is I wired these exactly like I said, and then I wired another side of it to the other TCP. So I just ran a wire from the TCP um, over to the other TCP. It's that simple. You can do that. Very easy. Now, the other way that you can do this would be to run two wires. So instead of running uh, one wire to one TCP and then running it from the TCP to the other one, you could actually solder two wires on here and run one of these positives to one of the TCPs and then this positive to say the other TCP. And you could also do this with the ground. You could run another secondary ground to the other TCP as well. So you could run, you know, multiple wires if you want to. It's up to you. It'll accomplish the exact same thing. So it really doesn't matter as long as they're connected to each other. Positive to positive, negative to negative. It doesn't really matter how you run it. As long as you run it after the crossover, positive to positive, negative to negative. So for me, like I said, I run one wire to one of the TCPs, and then I, I run just like the binding post. So it looks like there's two wires connected to the binding post. There'd be two wires connected to the back of one of the TCP drivers, 
and then that's just running a positive and negative to the other TCP driver. Most important thing is that we have them wired together and in the same polarity. So positive to positive, negative to negative, don't switch that polarity. That is it. Now you know how to take this crossover diagram and turn it into a crossover network like we just did. You should be able to get started on any of these DIY projects that you want to. Now, if you buy any plans from me and you have further questions, just go ahead and ask me, email me, send me pictures. I'd be happy to look them over. And if you need crossover components, make sure to check the links down in the description below. They are affiliate links and they do help out the channel. So if you buy from them, it does help me out and it helps me make more videos like this. So thanks guys for all of your help. This is Toys DIY Audio and I'm out.